Our poster represents the axon, which as we know, is divided into the extracellular fluid, the membrane, and the cytosol. The purple ions symbolize potassium, while the white ions represent sodium. The dark blue channels at the membrane are sodium ion channels, and the red ones are potassium ion channels. The sodium-potassium ion pump is represented in beige. The plus and minus stand for the voltages within the process. The plugs are represented in pink, and the logs within the channels represent the voltage logs. In a resting state, the potassium ion channels are open. Its concentration within the cytosol is about 40 times higher than in the extracellular fluid, creating an electrochemical gradient, which leads to the diffusion of potassium ions into the extracellular fluid. These ions are then once again actively transported back into the cytosol throughout the sodium-potassium ion pumps. The so-called potassium leakage assures a stable membrane potential. During the resting potential, the membrane is not permeable to sodium ions, resulting in an additional electrochemical gradient. While the resting potential is maintained, the extracellular fluid has a slightly more positive charge, whereas the cytosol has a slightly more negative one. Once the neuron is excited by an impulse, a small amount of sodium ion channels open up, therefore the membrane becomes more permeable for sodium ions. Due to the facilitated diffusion of sodium ions, the membrane potential shifts. The extracellular fluid and the cytosol change to their opposite charge, making the extracellular fluid slightly more negative and the cytosol slightly more positive. When the membrane potential reaches minus 55 millivolts, the threshold is met. Once this occurs, even more voltage-gated sodium ion channels open up, leading to a great increase of sodium ion concentration within the cytosol. In the end, the overshoot is reached. In the beginning of repolarization, there is a lot of sodium inside the cell, more than in the extracellular fluid which means that we have a concentration gradient. To prevent even more sodium ions from entering the cell or leaving the cell, the sodium ion channels have to be made inactive. We showed that through the little stoppers, they close on the sodium ion channels. This is to show that they are not just voltage gated at that point, but really inactive. The sodium ions then travel, move inside the cell and introduce conduction further down the axon. As this happens, the voltage-gated potassium ion channels open up to counteract the change of charge inside and outside of the cell. The positively charged potassium now diffuses along the electrochemical gradient into the negatively charged extracellular fluid. The sodium-potassium ion pumps are still active and transport both sodium and potassium to further re-establish resting potential. Due to the increased permeability to potassium ions and the too slow closure of potassium ion channels, a stage of hyperpolarization is established. This slight undershoot is caused by too many potassium ions diffusing out of the cytosol. In conclusion, the membrane potential becomes more negative than during the resting potential. After hyperpolarization and the closure of the potassium ion channels occurred, the ion distribution is refracted. Therefore, the resting potential is once again created. The sodium ion channels change from the inactive stage back to the voltage-gated one indicated through the lock closure, as well as the removal of the plugs from the sodium ion channels. Not only the potassium leakage takes place once again, but the sodium-potassium ion pumps are active as well, maintaining a stable membrane potential. 
Now the neuron can be excited again. Thank you for your attention.